Compared to children born to older women, children born to teenage girls are more likely to drop out of high school, become teen parents themselves, rely on Medicaid and SCHIP, experience abuse and neglect, enter the foster care system, be raised in single parent families, and in particular grow up in poverty. In 2014, there were 24 births per 1,000 teenage girls in the United States. Although U.S. teen birth rates are still higher than rates in many other industrialized countries, especially among Hispanic and black youth, they have declined by 61% in the last quarter century. Teen pregnancy has declined so much, it's almost unbelievable. If we didn't have good data, we wouldn't believe it. A decline every year except two since 1991, and a total decline of 60%. Name another public problem, especially for kids, that has shown that kind of success. So it's amazing. That progress has corresponded with the field's increasing reliance on data. Researchers now track a wide variety of indicators and demographic trends, while the federal government has begun funding and identifying evidence-based programs whose methods produce measurable results. We're part of a broader movement that's underway within the federal government, a broader movement to use evidence to inform programs and to utilize funding in programs that have demonstrated that they have effects. It's also important to know that this is driving investments of limited federal dollars in how we fund programs and activities, and especially those that have shown to be effective. But questions remain. What caused the decline in American teen pregnancy? And will this new evidence from federally funded evaluations lead to better understanding of the issue? You raised a really important question, which is why do the rates go down? And I do think we still need a lot more scholarship in that area. Not only do we need to know things about social norms and values, which you talked about, the national agreement and so forth, but we are lacking information on the most fundamental issue, which is what proportion of the, of the decline is due to fewer teens having sex, and what proportion of the decline is due to those children who are having sex using contraception better. Absent that information, forget about why they might have done those two things. If we don't know what proportion is due to explanation A or B, our ability to project forward and program for it and work in this area is severely hampered. It's already clear that 20 years of data has led to better understanding of certain populations and practices and of the value of evidence-based programming in communities. Programs in, in Iowa, Colorado, St. Louis, and the San Francisco Random Assignment Program, and all of them show that they got attracted thousands of women to come to clinics. Providers are an important part of this. Both the Colorado and St. Louis studies showed that when you counsel and tell women all the things that are available, about 70% of them choose the most effective method. One of the uh, advantages of using evidence-based teen pregnancy prevention programs is that there is such diversity in the evidence base. And there is enough for a different community to pick a program that will fit within its own community values and fit the population that they're looking to serve. With 38 evidence-based programs right now, there's a range, and communities can select what works best for them. 